Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Abdes Afras. Abdes is the CEO of Wellavi, a comprehensive whole person wellness and personal coaching platform. Wellavi focuses on improving individuals' quality of life through its person first approach and proprietary six dimensions of wellness system. But before we get into those six dimensions, let's stick with the dimension of you, Abdes. Tell us a little bit about you and your background. Thanks for having me. As you already said, CEO of Wella V and founder, we started last year. We'll get into this later, but I live in Germany and my career has been a journey of continuous learning and growth, which is important how we got to Wellaby in the end. So I've studied computer science and economics, pretty boring probably for most of us, but this has been a strong foundation for my professional. For the last 15 years, I've worked in the fields of forensics, e-discovery and compliance. You would say it's completely different to what I do today, but later on, we'll get to this, why it's actually a bit linked to, to each other. And during this time, I, I served as the president of Access Data pretty well-known company in the forensic space or industry. And the turning point actually in my career for Willa V came during the COVID-19 pandemic, which probably has happened for many because we just started to refocus and, and do good things in the end, although COVID obviously was not a good thing. So I felt out to create something that could make a meaningful impact on people's lives, which led to the creation of Willa V. And would like to talk about yeah well i want to go through well avi and so there's so many things here that are worth touching on one is certainly the space that you work in and we'll go through a little bit more in detail uh, what well avi is and the story behind the name etc but also really i want to make sure that we cover off really a discussion of building a company coming out of COVID. I mean, I think that's a really interesting challenge. And also kind of what's it like to establish a business like this in Germany right now, you know, as you grow it out and you know, the appetite for such businesses. But before we get into some of those follow-up questions, tell me a little bit about the Wella V story. You were just starting to go into the name. It's a great name, by the way. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, as for all startups, it's always you're going to spend a lot of time and you will then realize you're actually wasting time. But it was a good experience because we were looking, we wanted to make sure that the word well is in it. And what the name well reflects our core focus on the six dimensions of well-being, which we will cover later on. But with well signifying good, obviously English, and then avi, which uh, drawing inspiration from the French word Avi, meaning live. So well avi stands for good life. This is where we start. That's we build the foundation with that. Cool. And tell me a little bit more. So well avi now, you've got it going. It is a company that you're working with individuals and improving their you know quality of life. I love that idea. I also really love this idea of the six dimensions of wellness. So tell us a little bit more about that. It's a very important question, I would say, because if you look in the space and coaching, personal development, I prefer to call it well-being rather than wellness. And we are, by the way, a US-based company. I'm based out of Germany. That's the good thing of globalization, right? Mm -hmm. And But we address all kinds of markets. But the six dimensions, if you look at the typical coaching and personal development is more on career. And what we have learned think for my for our generations it was just career and the most employee employers and even employees didn't really look after themselves so what mm. we've done is that you just you don't have just one dimension which is your career so that's why we've built the six dimensions as you can see behind me the the logo of well be the six dimension the hexagon is your professional your mental your social your financial physical and intellectual. So what mm. we think, and it's not just us, if only if you bring these dimensions together and have balance in, in all the dimensions, you will have a good life. That's the only oh, way. Lord. If you just coach Abdes, in your... I'm in trouble. <laughs> I don't know Why? if I have all those dimensions sorted out at all in my own life, but I hear you. And I think it's such a great lesson to make sure that you balance those things out. And clearly, I definitely see how 
being healthier, things like social and intellectual can actually open up doors that are great for your business. So it makes complete sense. Well, let me kind of jump to the broader market a little bit, because I feel that, as you mentioned up front, you know, COVID opened up an opportunity for folks to talk about well-being, even more so than had been done leading up to COVID. It was already a movement for sure. But I felt like COVID kind of acted almost like a catalyst. Where are we now in terms of just wellness and well-being coaching as a marketplace? Yeah, as a market, marketplace is definitely growing. You would you would think it's just in the typical countries, but it's in every country. So we've just launched India. We've launched South Africa. People really want to look after themselves. And what you will see is the younger generations, Gen Zs and millennials, they really care about work-life balance. And this is where you see the majority, but that doesn't mean it's only them. So everyone wants to do, and I think because of COVID, everyone really has realized that I need to do something for my body. And that's not just on my career. And, and this is where you have a happy life only if all your dimensions, of course you can extend it to eight dimensions, but I think it looks nicer with a hexagon. But the market is definitely growing, although it went, a bit down after COVID, right after COVID, that people went a bit back to normal, which is good. But we see a lot of demand in this space. Yeah. So when you're working with individuals, Abdes, is the commercial model that the individuals come to you or is it through relationships with enterprises? So we, when we launched, we started with the consumer world just to get some feedback, how to make the workflows makes more sense for the individuals because the individuals will eventually be our clients on the enterprise side. But we are a B2B business and we have relationships with corporates and we let the consumers actually for free on our platform. Um, that's what we've built for consumers if they want to just try it out and use the on-demand center, which is free of charge. Excellent. And, you know, you mentioned that this is a global thing. You said that Wella V is actually a U.S. based company. Makes complete sense. The wellness and well-being space has grown dramatically here in North America, for sure. But I did want to kind of touch on this idea of what's happening in Europe. I mean, are you seeing certain markets there have certain characteristics that they're interested in for this field? Or is it similar to the U.S.? What are the similarities and differences? The sad thing is that uh, the burnout rates are unfortunately increasing. And that's why platforms like Wallaby exist, because you will need something that can help you. And ideally, before you even experience the burnout, right? You're trying to avoid the burnout and a financial crisis and, and back pain, et cetera. But if, you, if I take Germany, it's, I think it's the fourth biggest wellness or well-being market in the world, mm. next to UK. U.S. obviously is the, is, the, is the biggest, but we see similar behavior that people really care and do more just on not only on Korea, but on the other dimensions I covered. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I found that myself. I spent quite a bit of time in Germany this year, and I was actually quite surprised. I assumed that the culture would be one way and found it to be quite focused on balance and in ways, the just the whole idea of the spas and things like that that you have in Germany. I just wish we had these in America. We don't have anything quite like that here. And so That's it true. does show me that there's a consciousness of some of these things, perhaps in Europe, that goes back to their core, you know, in a way that perhaps, you know, we're learning still here in the U.S. Yeah, I, was, I mean... The spa thing is very interesting for, for me as well because I love sauna. And when I travel to the US, it's not a standard because no. maybe people just don't don't like it like we do here. But this time now, wherever you go, saunas are packed. And, yeah. But also is is just, I don't know, if you've used it here or wherever in, in, in the world, it just makes you feel so much better. I mean, it's incredible. Right? Yeah, a friend of mine yeah. took me to one in Germany, and I just remember the going into one of the saunas where they have the the smells, you know, yeah. put into the thing, and you're just like, it's just an incredible experience. It's mind changing for sure. And then some of the stuff that you see as trends, like the hot water, cold water stuff that 
seems to be the hottest thing online these days is something that it's almost such a staple in such a basic thing there. And they're just like, yeah, of course, we've been doing this for, you know, 150 years. So, yeah. so you're like, okay, great. Well, we're catching up slowly but surely. We'll figure this stuff out. But I mean, Abdes, it's amazing what you've built with Wellavi. And I mean, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, where did the passion come from from this space? As you mentioned it up front, you trained in a completely different field. It's always nicer to sell a product or bring a product to the market that helps the world. And that's what I was doing in the forensic space because we were fighting crime all kind of crime, corruption, bribery. And after the 15 years, I've just felt like I need to do something else. And then post-COVID, then looked into the space. And that's how we actually differentiate ourselves to everyone wants to, to disrupt a market, but we want to actually democratize the space in making it accessible and available to everyone. It shouldn't be just available for the rich or it shouldn't be a luxury. But what we have done is we looked at coaching was quite expensive. Right. It could be very expensive. Yeah. You can go up to over $1,000 an hour. So what we are doing is, and, and it's so interesting, before I became an executive, I didn't have any coaching. But the moment I became an executive, I had such a big budget. But it's, it's actually crazy because you need coaching when you're younger or at the, at the beginning of your career because that helps yeah. you to become one day an executive. But that's what we have done. So to help the organizations, we've built an on-demand center. First, is coaching can only be good if it's efficient. And the right. biggest challenge in this industry is matching, having the wrong coach. Right. And even the coaches want to make sure they work with the people that, where the chemistry is right. 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 And we've built a, a, a self-assessment that's based on colors and shapes, which is really powerful. If you want to read about psychology and colors, it's very powerful. And we create the, quite a lot of technology. I don't want to go too deep into that, but... We do the matching based on 64 trades on each side. Right. And it's a fun fact as well. People just like running the test and then helps you to find the right coach. That's the first step. So we we actually replace the discovery session. So for organizations, if they want to do coaching, personal development or professional development, we find the right coach for them wherever they are in the world. And the second point is that it doesn't need to be life coaching all the time. We have built an on-demand center that's split into three areas, which is reading articles, uh, recorded coaching sessions, and challenges. And they're all coming from our coaches. And they are linked to all to the six dimensions. And we tell you what's good for you. Even there, we have the matching, and it's much cheaper than the live coaching. Right? Yeah. The combination is best. And then people can track whatever they do, whether they want to enhance their leadership skills or look into the physical dimension financial, they can run a challenge, very modular, and then track it to see what the progress is in that dimension. That's great. So an individual can start on the platform and then they can also then use it to match up with a coach for those kind of more personal, direct coaching opportunities. And there's all these support functions. It sounds perfect. I agree. I feel like leadership coaching and wellness coaching and well-being coaching really has gone through phases of development. Certainly, I, and I mentioned this on the, on the show before, uh, early in my career, if, if someone mentioned that you had to get a coach in this space, it was probably a bad sign for you, you know, but now it's kind of a badge of success and very much something that it's exactly what you highlighted. It's a generational shift in what is valued and what is not, you know, for generation X, a badge of success would be suffering and pain. And a badge of success today for the, you know, the millennials and Gen Y would be to live a very balanced life and to be happy. You know, it's a very, very different kind of mind frame, to be honest. It's, I think it's a good step forward. I talk about this quite often because people think coaching is nice to have. Yes, if you don't have the budget, then you have to say it's nice to have. But if you look at people like Cristiano Ronaldo, everyone knows, I guess, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's still, even being the best, or some people say second best, whatever, he's still using coaching in different dimensions of his life, right? And on the other hand, we have a lot of celebrities who are suffering a burnout, depressions. And that is what, and well-being and coaching, especially Willavi, is here to stay because looking through what they're always telling us from a study last year, is that 
the economy of the world is losing 12 billion workdays a year just because of stress and anxiety. And that results into a trillion dollar in loss in the economy. So for 2024, we see that a lot of organizations, for those we're talking to, are prepared to do something because a person, an employee who's not happy or who's, who cannot come to work is, of course, not being able to, to produce anything for, for a company. Right. So this is where we see to help organizations to say, okay, training and the, the traditional stuff we know, of course, has to exist. But in combination to say, give your people something that helps them to really buy. That we have a mental health crisis. That's the fact, right? And most people don't want to talk about it. And we want to give them the tool. As we say, we want to, we are guiding people to better tomorrows. Yeah. I mean, I think you hit on it. It's not a nice to have. It's a need to have. It's a need to have structure. And I think, you know, what we're going to see over the next, I'd say, five years is that it's going to become so ingrained in people's lives that it will be part of kind of a new pattern and new ritual, you know, so that it will become almost expected. And I've noticed it. I mean, just think about the typical conversation that you have with peers. If I were to think about a conversation 10, 15 years ago with peers and someone had said, well, I sat down with my wellness coach, you know, I think everyone would look at each other going, oh, you know, whoa, you know, <laughs> he's got some problems. Yeah, he's, you know, <laughs> whereas today it would literally be greeted like, how interesting. Yeah, tell me more. You know, it's a very, it's a very different vibe. And, you know, thank God. Thank fucking God. We need that, right? We need more positive and open view on all of these issues to face them and hopefully move forward. But again, Abdes, I'm going to jump back into that moving forward and thinking about the near future. 2024, hit me. What's on the horizon? So what I see on the horizon is that people as well as employers are going to do a shift in the way they're going to see well-being, personal development, and coaching. Because there are a lot of case studies that can show you that providing such services will just make it both sides happier. And the employer. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it easier to use. We're going to we want to be very innovative on the technology side. Things like virtual reality, like voice recognition, right? Body language that would help coaching session to be more efficient and have a better life. I think 2024 is going to be a, a very good year for the well-being space. Or I'm excited. Wellness space. Well, with that in mind, I wish you a happy holiday. And I'm excited to see how Well of V continues to expand and grow in 2024. And also, really, as we embrace wellness and well-being in general across our society, we've been having a great conversation with Abdes Afras. He is the CEO of Well of e. It's a comprehensive whole person wellness and personal coaching platform. Well of e focuses on improving individuals' quality of life through its person-first approach and proprietary six dimensions of wellness system. We've been talking about the six dimensions of wellness, obviously applying everything, every aspect of your life, and really trying to find that balance that will work for you. Abdes, thank you so much for being on the Uncaged show today, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. 